Hello everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to my sewing room. I hope you've all had a lovely week and managed to get some sewing done. It has been absolutely glorious here this week. We've had a little bit of rain here and there, but mostly it has been sunshine. And because of that, um, we've all been wearing our lovely summer clothes. So I'm gonna kickstart my video off like I normally do with what I'm wearing. Now, this top is uh, a top that I made back in April 2023. It uh, was a first make, so there are a few issues with it and I will point them out if they're not blatantly obvious to you. So I pulled out my project sheet, so I've got that here. So this top, as I said, is the S8601 and it's very simple but it's extremely flattering. So I'm going to stand up and show you it. So it has a, um, a round neck, so it's quite high up, round neck. It does have the internal uh, loose um, interfacing, but it does sit quite flat with this, this fabric, so that's not an issue. The, the front is um, divided down the middle and it has this split. I like to leave the split open, but you can tie it like the sleeves. Well, I like the sleeves obviously tied, but I wanted to just leave that open. Um, the sleeves then, normal sleeves, um, it split into a tie. So they are a sleeve that divided down the middle to create that split and then you tie them off so they, it just feels very feminine feminine and the sleeves are quite loose and you can move your arms quite quite freely the back is also split in two and it has a um, split opening at the top with a button fastening the two issues i've had with making this top uh, first attempt was this split here was originally up here and it did show off my belly uh, which is not a nice sight for anyone and shouldn't be shouldn't be something that a 60 year old woman goes around showing so I did hand stitch quite a bit of that up two or three inches so if you do decide to make this just be aware that you might need to stitch that up more you might like the the effect of it but because I leave this open, that was quite obvious. I don't know whether that would be different if you tied it. The other thing I found when making this for the first time, it was a little tight on my bicep. So you can see here, it is tight and it is pushing the sleeve up slightly towards the shoulder. But um, I'm not really too bothered about it and um, it's made in this beautiful silky georgette so it's really nice and light and and flowy and super to wear in this weather and very quickly i have just matched it with my my black seaforth pants one of my favorites with with the zip and the the donut pull um, I wear these trousers to death and I really should make some more of them. So that is what I am wearing and this is Simplicity 8601. So what have I been up to this week? Well I have managed to sew quite a bit because I had a few days off work and as you know last week I went to purple stitches with my daughter and we bought well I bought um, quite a bit of fabric and some of that fabric I uh, stitched up a shirt for my husband so project sheet again so I made him the McCall's 6044 now I have made him this shirt before and I made a long sleeve version back at Christmas and he loved it. So when I showed him the octopus fabric, um, which I knew he would love because he's um, obsessed with the ocean and sea creatures, uh, I said to him that I didn't have enough to make a long sleeved shirt, but I could make him a short sleeved shirt, which is great for this weather. So 
when I bought this from Purple Stitches they I I had what they had left on the roll and there was only I think it was only probably 1.7 meters so it was it was really tight to get this pattern all cut out on the fabric and I did have to make um, uh, I did have to split the collar slightly so I will show you that so this this is the shirt it's um collar collar stand um, front placket these beautiful little smarty buttons navy smarty buttons which capture the color of the octopus um, this is a hundred percent cotton um, short sleeves and at last at last I remembered to actually stitch in a label so I've got this lovely label stitched in now because I didn't have enough fabric I had to split the collar in two so if you look very closely and nobody would notice this other than me is there is a seam line there so I've just had to make the collar in two to get the fabric cut out so those octopus were pointing in the right direction and um, but apart from that I was really pleased now when I made this originally the long sleeve version for my husband back um, just before Christmas I did a tummy adjustment and that tummy adjustment is already in the pattern that I traced off and altered so I've got that for prosperity but this is the same so it has a tummy adjustment already incorporated into the pattern and I will put a link to how to do the tummy adjustment because it is great for anybody men women who just have a slight tummy and they feel that um, clothes can be uh, tight around their tummy or their hips and it distributes that fabric really nicely just around the front it doesn't alter the sides or the back um, so it's a very simple adjustment to make so he's really pleased with that so happy bunny so on to my next make. A few weeks ago I attempted to make the flounce dress and it was an absolute disaster and so I decided to abandon it because after making three twirls and continuing to tweak the pattern it just got worse and worse and worse and I realised when trying on the dress a few times that the colour was not doing anything for me. It was washing me out because I'm very fair and I found that with the yellow it just just looked very sallow looking so I was moaning to my daughter about it and she said oh I wouldn't mind a shirt made in that lemon fabric because she's blonde this lemon fabric really sort of suited her really well so I decided um to literally cut the seams off of the flounce dress, flatten out the fabric and repurpose it for a shirt for her. Now I had made her a pyjama top a while back from Simplicity 9217 and the shirt part of this pyjama set um, it's a really nice shirt so I just decided to make that pattern because I already knew that um, it would fit her because I've made a pair of pyjamas using that so I just reused that pattern and um, calculated how much fabric how much extra fabric I would need to make this shirt um, so <clears throat> I I ordered uh, an extra meter so I thought I'll order order a meter and I know I've got plenty of this fabric so the fabric came and when I was looking at it I was quite surprised at the difference in the colour so let me show you so my original fabric was this so you can see lots of um, beautiful bright lemons and the new fabric came through and it was like this so you can see the vibrancy in the leaves here these look a bit more washed out so I I looked at it and think and thought what am I when I going to do because if I have 
the front um because I had one front cut in the old fabric the original fabric and I thought I can't cut a new piece of fabric because you will be able to see the difference of them because they'll be sitting alongside each other so I had a meter of this fabric so I started playing around with it so I did manage to get two fronts cut out of it and two sleeves but I didn't have enough to recut the back so I've used the new fabric in the sleeves and the fronts and a collar but the old fabric I've used at the back so it's not as obvious and Rachel Rachel said you know mum nobody would notice but you know what we're like I noticed but I love how this has now turned out so this is um simplicity 9217 it's um beautiful vibrant lemons it has the it has a pocket here and i have um pattern matched it so it disappears into the background but there's definitely a pocket there and um i like to pattern match when 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 i can and i was quite lucky to get this little bit of fabric um out of what was left and i put some little stripy buttons in which i thought were quite nice and they were out of my stash so it has um a cuban collar um which when i first did the cuban collar with the pajamas that i made i did struggle a little bit with it but obviously when you make these things you you learn so i knew exactly what i was doing this time and that worked out really well. So that's the front. So you can see the vibrancy of the yellows on the fronts and the sleeves. But if I turn turn it around, you can see just by looking at the sleeve and the back, this is not as vibrant, but I'm not really too bothered because it's at the back and I don't think you would really notice it. I think you would have noticed it more if one side was the original fabric and the other was the new fabric, but this turned out really well and the little label I put in hers is please look after me so she's really pleased with that now she did try it on and she did say that she wants it taken up four inches so this lemon fabric is going to be with me for a while yet so I have the task of taking that taking that up another four inches and then it will be gone gone now when i was um playing around with all this lemon fabric i did have some of it left and i i have been playing a little bit with the insole bright fabric which is the heat resistant material that you use um, for things like um, hot pads and coasters and oven gloves and I thought I wouldn't mind making a um, I don't even know what you call it I think it's like a fabric trivet where you can put things that you obviously take out of the oven and you can put it straight on and because it's heat resistant it will protect your work surface so I use this um, this beautiful lemon fabric to make this very big um, trivet so this is 17 inches by 12 inches I quilted it so in the middle is some low loft fleece and I will put down below um, the code of it I didn't want to use the soft and stable by Annie in this because soft and stable is not cheap so and I want to you know a sizable piece like this I'd rather use it on a bag so I use the low loft fleece and the insole bright and I backed it with some calf facet fabric that I had in my stash so there you can see it's all quilted and and I have trimmed it with some binding so this is the binding is also from my fabric stash and this is the bumbleberry sunshine so I just felt that that worked really well on um, both sides and I put a little um, hook thing tag on it so it will will hang 
so I was quite quite pleased with that and I can see myself making a few of those but obviously you need, do need a sizable amount of scrap to make that and I did think um, I might make one of my you know the little squares that I I make up every so often I might make another trivet using using those because that is real scrap busting they're just tiny little bits of fabric so after I made this I started to play with more of my fabrics uh, my little scraps of fabric and I thought I would make some little coasters so I couldn't decide on what size to make them so I found this little compass thing we all had these when we were at school and um, this came in a set so I had this in my sewing room and I thought what I do is I'll just make a, a circle using that so I do have some template plastic and I got this off of Amazon and it's just called um, gridded template plastic so I I use this quite a bit when I'm tracing um, smaller um, patterns for, for cushions where I want to be able to see the fabric underneath it so with this you can see the fabric underneath it so I've got my circle shape so I went with this this size and I cut out some fabrics and I also cut out some of the the insole bright so you can see there's the insole bright I cut out one in the um, soft and stable so these are just scrap bits of soft and stable and too far too small to use in things like bags so they have has been quite near, nice to use those scraps up so I sandwiched those together and then I found some scrap fabric and decided to also put on a front and a back so my first one I did I made this with the owl so you'll notice this as um, tulip pink fabric and with the owl and I've done the back now because these two pieces of um, materials together it is quite quite spongy and I just felt if I was going to put a cup on something I really needed to make sure that that cup wasn't going to wobble so I quilted this quite densely so it's got quite a close um, quilting on it so all of those have been the back the soft by soft and stable by Annie the insole bright and the top have been quilted together and it's really sort of compacted down and I've made some bias binding and stitched around side now I'm not very good at bias binding because obviously it's something I I don't do a lot I mean I I, I have started to practice a bit because I'm I've got a bag in my mind that I want to make so come to that in a future video but I thought I'd just like to practice making some binding and try and get it um, stitched on so I made a little one to start with to see what that looked like and this works quite well with normal cups and, and tumblers then I decided to make a bigger one so you can see this one is probably about half an inch bigger around so it's quite a sizable difference and that is exactly the same with the back still made up with um, soft and stable and insole bright and quilted together but with this one what I did was when I put the bias binding on I decided to stitch around so, so you can see you can see my stitching around the bias binding and um, it's not too it's not too bad I was quite pleased with how close I got that and on the back you can see sort of it's there but that was fun so I made those two and I was I was carrying on experimenting because I was having a bit of trouble <laughs> with the bias binding so I made a little birdie one with this very pink um, tulip pink tent stripe and on the back we've got the, the, the lazy stripe so that was quite nice but I, I just cannot seem to finish off the binding well when sort of when they come and join together so if anybody knows of a really good um, YouTube video that will shows you how to do it I'll be grateful so 
and I made this one as well and this one is slightly different because I made the bias binder but this time I hand stitched it on and I crossed crossed it over so I sort of pulled it over but um, yeah so they're all all very very different and quite bright and it was just having a little bit of fun really because I I'd made through you know two shirts and I just decided I just wanted to go off and make something bright and colourful and my scraps look at me all the time keep shouting at me to use some of them up and I'm terrified that my scrap box will start to overfill and um, just by doing things like this makes me feel that I'm I'm actually using up my scraps so and also I thought these would make really nice Christmas presents I know I shouldn't talk about Christmas but I thought if I can get my binding down to um how I want it to look I could probably hand out a few of these at Christmas I don't know whether anybody would want things like this because they're so bright I mean I like bright stuff but hey ho we'll uh, we'll see purchases this week have um I haven't spent a lot of money this week I did buy the lemon fabric so I bought a meter of the lemon fabric to finish off the shirt for Rachel the only other thing I bought was some of this so this is um, wool felt and I use this stuff to make up the Luna Lapin um, dolls and the lady who I had made the five rabbits for, the Alfie rabbit, she has come back and said that she wants three more. So I will be making those for her and I will probably make those in the background and just show you them as finished items because I did, I have in previous videos spent a lot of time showing you the, the Alfie rabbits. So in plans for next week I have been looking at the Bound to Be t-shirt by Pattern Emporium so I've been flicking through the instruction book and I will be making some t-shirts from that so I have I do have some bamboo jersey that I bought a while back and I was going to make the Somerset tea from those but I think I might start making the Bound to Be um, t-shirt from them instead. Um, because I just want to get some plain fabrics, um, plain garments in my wardrobe uh, because I know I harp on about it all the time um, but every time I go I go fabric shopping for stuff that will work with my wardrobe I always end up with a bunch of pattern fabrics so I need to sort of be more focused and disciplined and because I have some plain jersey knits I'm going to use those up first uh, and then I hopefully that will inspire me to carry on making some plainer clothes because I definitely need some plain um, fabric trousers in my wardrobe because I've been wearing my seaforth pants um, religiously and uh, I need to sort of I'm gonna, they're going to wear out before anything else because I wear them so much but I do really need to get my wardrobe sorted and under control so I think that is it for today if you have enjoyed the content uh, it would be lovely if you could become one of my subscribers and if you are already one of my subscribers thank you for your continued support I hope you have a fabulous week sewing and I will see you all very soon take care